Welcome, and thank you for attending our virtual camp open house. My name is Terry Ryan, and I'm the camp director here at Hofstra University. Today, you will see a lot of footage of how camp has run in prior years. Obviously, we want to get as close to those experiences as we can while maintaining health and safety protocols. In addition, we are very fortunate to have a partnership with Northwell Health. Today, we will do an overview of the camps, typical day, lunch, transportation, how to register for camp, and also a question and answer session at the end. So hold your questions to the end if you could, and we'll be more than happy to answer all the questions that come through as we produce ourselves through the show. The next thing we're gonna do is show a video um, of our camp. I think it'll be great for you to get a pictorial of our campus. It's a beautiful 240 acre campus, and just give an overview of where we are as far as our uh, physical setting. So after the video, I'll come back and I'll give you an overview of the camp, explain a few things. We also have Mark Russell, who's in charge of our sports camps here, and Melissa Gibson, who's one of our office administrators to help you out tonight. So if we can roll the video, we'll uh, go with that. And then afterwards, I'll come back on and walk you through some other things. Thanks again for attending. and athletic. Welcome to Hofstra University, where campers have access to all of the world-class resources offered to our college students. We are located on a beautiful 240-acre campus, which includes buildings suitable for academics, the arts, and athletics that are shared by people from around the globe. Campers get first-class instruction from college professors, learn at our Saltzman Education Center, and utilize state-of-the-art labs at Gittleson Hall and the Engineering Complex. In addition, athletic activity is centered around our Division I coaches and facilities. Our employees are all carefully trained and thoroughly vetted through a comprehensive background check. We are busy preparing for traditional Hofstra summer camp experience, but please know we go above and beyond all health and safety protocols to keep you and your family safe. We are continually preparing and are ready for the changing state of public health. This is Terry Ryan, the camp director at Hofstra Summer Camps. I'm standing in front of the Oak Street Center. The Oak Street Center serves as our business office and main hub for our summer camp program. Our summer camp program goes from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., four sessions, seven weeks. Includes transportation, and a hot catered lunch buffet. We offer three different models for the camp. We offer a specialty camp, a learning institute, and the ever popular sports academy. The famous David S. Mack Sports and Exhibition Complex, also known as the Hofstra Arena. Connected to the Hofstra Arena is the physical education building. Physical education building and the arena are the main hub. It's the area where they get picked up and they get dropped off. We also meet in the middle of the day just to reconvene and check in with everyone. All the facilities here at Hofstra the softball field, the stadium across the street, the Division I university level fields are used by your campers. I'm standing among the green grass of Hofstra University. This is a great place for the children to release their energy, get out, run around, and participate in recreation games and sport games. Recreation games could include gaga, dodgeball, flag football, could be soccer, as long as they get out, run around, get their legs moving, and expend some of the energy. We have water stations set up that strategically place for the child Anytime they need a break, you can feel free to take a glass of water, sit under a tree, and just relax. Also out here, we do our special days, one of the highlights of summer camp. In the past, we've had carnivals set up, we've had crazy water relays, we've had DJ parties outside, and also color wars. It's just a great place for the children to get out in the green, run around, and enjoy some fun. Hofstra USA is our premier dining facility for the Hofstra summer camps. There are numerous rooms inside for the campers to eat. All food is expertly prepared by our catering service right here on campus. Also, our nurses monitor any food allergies. We're able to take control of that and make sure that your child gets the food they need, an entree of the day, a potato of the day, and a vegetable of the day. And if that's not good and they don't like what that is, we have hamburgers and hot dogs every day. We have a full salad bar. We also have a fruit station. And the best part is at the end of the lunch, they get re-energized, they get a great dessert to take outside, 
We usually sit under the trees, sit on the grass, enjoy that before they get out, get ready for camp in the afternoon. At Hoster Summer Camps, we are very lucky to be around some of the finest facilities in the world. We have science labs, we have computers, we have beautiful classrooms. Off to my side is Gittleson Hall. Gittleson Hall is the site of our science lab and also the site of our science camp. It's a great way for children to understand the lessons, understand the curriculum in a first class facility. The Hofstra Swim Center is the home of the Hofstra Olympic size indoor swimming pool. All the students that come to Hofstra as campers get to experience Red Cross certified swim instruction each day and hopefully make progress as they go throughout the summer. Included in the pool are lanes to swim, diving boards to dive, and also just fun activities for children to enjoy the time at the camp. Also note, we follow all the strict guidelines of the American Camping Association and also the Nassau County Board of Health. We are fully staffed with water safety instructors and also the Hofstra lifeguards stay on duty all summer to protect your child and make it a safe environment. One of the additional benefits of being on a college campus is to have the support of the Hofstra University Public Safety Office. The Public Safety Office is part of our administration team that helps us run camp throughout the day and keep the children safe. We are very fortunate that many of the public safety offices are EMT certified and also first aid certified to make sure the day is a safe one and a happy one for all the campers. Hofstra University is the home to several theaters for performing arts. Spiegel Theater behind me is one example of the theaters on campus that come with a performing arts stage and seating for people to view and witness the wonderful things that are happening. Our programs that would use these theaters include our musical theater program, our dance program. We hold many of our special days in the theaters. It's a great way for the students to understand and see how beautiful the campus is and all the different buildings that they can use for their pleasure and fun. Breslin Hall has spacious rooms with stadium style seating. It's a great place for the children to spread out, learn, and also find their room to learn and grow and have fun at the campus. Our Game Builders Academy is housed here and so is our gifted camp. If you would like further information, we can be reached at 516-463-CAMP. Send us any questions you may have at ce-camps at hofstra.edu. Short time, I'm gonna do a little overview of the camp, go through a few things. Um, and again, if you have any questions, I'd love for you to put them up. And at the end, we'll be happy, uh, Mark, myself, and Melissa, to answer anything you have and any question you may may have. And also, I invite you um, at any time to come to campus and drive around. I mean, with the COVID restrictions, it's a little hard to get into some of the buildings, but it's just a great time to look around, drive around with your child, let them see where they can spend their summer, have some fun. And I think it'd be a great opportunity for you to just see the campus and um, it's a beautiful arboretum. It's 240 acres and it's manicured expertly and taken care of. Understand that this campus has been up and running um, throughout the whole process. Uh, we have students on campus that live here. We have students that go to school here. There's a full janitorial staff. There's um, administrators that take care of everything, including the food service and uh, anything to do with students, whether it's the summer for summer camp or during the year for our college students. So it's a pretty neat experience for your kids uh, to come here and, and be a college student. You know, we take over the campus for the summer for the most part, and they get to enjoy all the same things that college uh, students do also. As far as um, where we go, as far as the split ups, there, there are several options for people to enjoy. Um, some of the things would be a specialty camp. There's also a learning institute. And in addition to that, there's a, a sports academy camp. We also have partnerships with uh, several educational organizations. One of them is the Game Builders Academy. The Game Builders Academy is uh, for children to learn and uh, do a lot of STEM activities through game building. Since it's such a big thing, gaming and esports has become such a big part of young people's lives. Um, we're into helping them progress and, and make progress as they go through the learning process. We also um, have vocational training with BOCES, Center and uh, Long Island High School for the Arts. We also offer programs through them for children who that's uh, where their focus is. So uh, we're celebrating our 35th year um, this year, which is 
beautiful. It was started years ago and the camp has just started to grow and grow. And we've uh, built ourselves up into one of the largest camps uh, collegiately in the Northeast. And uh, our reputation is uh, enhanced by the cooperation from the administration and the staff here at the university to make sure that we put out a quality product and a, and a safe educational and, and fun environment. So we have four sessions. Uh, camp will start June 28th and ends August 13th. There are three two-week sessions and then a one-week session at the end. The one-week session is ever popular. Seventh week, we call it. It's the last session of camp. So as um, soon as school gets out, a few days, we're ready to come to camp. We dismiss August 13th, so they get a couple of weeks to get it together and get prepared to go back to school and what we hope is going to be a, a real natural and, and, and common environment they're used to. Um, we have Specialty and Learning Institute program, and that runs in two-week sessions. And really the cool thing about that is um, it's split up into two different two different camps. It's a morning session, an afternoon session. I'll explain in a little while. We also have a sports academy camp, one-week sessions, and that's a, the chance for the children who enjoy sports and want to be immersed in it all day long to spend time uh, in our first-class arenas, our stadiums and fields. Um, our, our facilities here are, are unmatched, and, and they're just, if you ever walked into the Hofstra Arena or the soccer field or the stadium, you'll be in awe of what these children get a chance to experience. And Sports Academy camps run one-week sessions um, throughout the summer. Also, uh, we have programs, like I said before, that offer vocational experience. Um, they offer different things for people to enjoy that maybe not a traditional camp would offer. And camp hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. Um, during the summer, we extend the hours. We're in early in the morning. We stay late at night in case any concerns or anything would make the next day, you know, a better experience for your child. But it's nine to four, a camp day that does not include the, the time for bus transportation. So, you know, it might be a half hour or so in the morning or in the afternoon uh, as we transport. And Melissa will go through that in a little while. But, you know, in many areas local to Hofstra, we do door to door transportation. Um, we offer programs from children entering kindergarten, which we call our cub camp right up through 12th grade. So there's really something for everyone. And uh, we love it when people bring their whole family and someone that has an interest in athletics can come, someone that has an interest in the arts can come, vocational ed can come, um, academics. So it, it kind of meets the needs of, of everybody. And um, that's the beauty of what we have here. It's a camp family. And the majority of people that have been here have been here for many, many years. And um, this is my 21st year. And um, most of the people have been here with me since I began. And it's a, it's a neat experience to just enjoy and know that people love coming back here each summer long. Um, transportation and lunch options we'll discuss in a little while, um, but our food um, is catered by Compass Food Catering Service. They're they, the same caterers that have many of the facilities on Long Island, and uh, we, we do a good job of meeting the needs of everyone and making sure that everybody goes home and, and they've had a good, safe meal during the day. Our staff... Um, gets a full criminal background check and they're really vetted carefully. That's one of the benefits of being at a major university is we work closely with our human resources department to make sure that everybody receives proper training, they're screened, um, they go through the New York State uh, Child Abuse Network up in Albany. So we're pretty, we're pretty strict about who we have work here. Um, everybody, like I said, gets a background check that's very thorough and we, you know, we'll vet everyone to the to the, the best of our capabilities that we can do it. Um, our staff includes our directors. Our directors are people who are experts in their field. Many are certified teachers or an expert in their exact field of, uh, of instruction. We also have counselors. A lot of our counselors are our Hofstra counselors from here. And we also have people that live here and go to school across the country. Um, like I said, we're pretty careful about who we choose. We also have registered nurses. We have a full infirmary of RNs. Usually there's between three and four RNs on duty at all times. We also have EMTs that assist and they're out in the fields. So if anyone um, isn't feeling great or gets injured out in the fields, we walk you talk and we have an EMT to get on it right away and they can eventually um, meet with the nurses and, and, you know, get properly administered. And also, uh, we're also lucky to be on college campus and have the public safety as part of our, our, um, our staff and usually uh, Officer Bailey is with us all summer long and he's stationed out in the corner and he's become a favorite of the kids and 
and he's just been here for years. And he's a wonderful man, and he makes sure we're safe and the right people are are in the right spots. And um, it's nice to know that we we have a safety you know uh, officer that's with us at all days and, and and every day we have camp. Our specialty camps and learning institute, like I said before, it's really a great experience because it's like you have two camps. It's like you're going to two different camps, which is kind of breaks up the day and gives everybody a, a, a wild experience. So half the day is your chosen program. It's like a major. If you come to college, you choose a major. Your major could be psychology, could be math, could be IT. So you choose a major and that's half of your day. The other half of the day is recreation and swim. Recreation is usually outside on our grass fields. They're, they're manicured. Like I said, we have beautiful uh, uh, staff that, that helps us out and make sure every day we're taken care of. and the swim part is an indoor, and Melissa will go through it in a little while. It's an indoor Olympic-sized pool. Um, we have full staff that, with you know lifeguards and and trained water safety instructors, and and the counselors help out also just to make sure everything is is safe, clean, and and advantageous for the students to learn. And uh, we get a lot of great feedback from people that children come here and progress in the swimming area. We use Red Cross certified swim instruction, so you'll, the first day um, there'll be they'll be tested and then move along as they progress with people, peers that are of the same level. Uh, programs vary with the academics. Like I said, we have things, if you wanna spend some time in a classroom, that's great. And you still get part of the day outside, right? To run around and get in the pool. We also have the arts from, from theater things to fine art kind of programs. And there's sports programs too, like children that wanna spend half the day in sports and uh, half the day doing recreation and swim. Some additional programs that might be of interest is our Cub Camp. Our Cub Camp is for our first year norm, uh, you know, people that would normally be going into kindergarten or leaving kindergarten. And it's a full scale of they do everything from academics uh, to the arts to they get playtime, whether it's in a bounce house or out of one of the fields or um, just to get to play with each other and interact and, and, and be social. And they also have the swim lessons, the same thing. And we have a lot of neat special days here, whether it's a concert or um, it's a it's a party out on the field or a DJ party or meeting you know important people. They get to participate all in the same thing. They travel together as a group, and um, they grow. And you know, and hopefully, we we like to say that they're our future campers. They're they're campers in kindergarten and and leaving kindergarten, and they come back and they stay for years and enjoy everything, and they get to see everything. First, has, first class and, and right up front. Our counselor apprentice program, we call our CAP program. That's uh, for 10th and 11th graders. And that's a program where the kids get to decide whether being a counselor is something they want in their future. We train them the first half of the summer they come. It's a, it's a, a three session, but two or three sessions you have to come for so you can get the full max capabilities of what we do. And some of it's classroom instruction and just go through rules, regulations. How would you handle things? Simulations, right? Case studies. They also get a CPR certification. Then they get to choose which kind of areas they think they would like to work in. And they work closely with another counselor or director and they learn how to be a counselor. And hopefully we're building our staff for the future and we've trained them properly. So when it's their time, they're ready to step in and, and get to work and, and be a productive member of our staff. BOCES is uh, children entering seventh through 12th grade. Uh, people can either go right to the BOCE Center in Westbury, the Barry Tech Center, or they can come here and we'll bust them over. Um, there's some neat things over there. If you've never been there, you should stop by. It's culinary arts. There's a full scale professional kitchen with chefs who let the kids learn that. And there's veterinary science where there's live animals, um, both big animals and small animals. And we have people that will help you learn how to maybe choose that as your career. Woodworking, aviation. And there's other things that they work on there. It's, it's a really um, interesting place and a great thing for someone that's not sure what they want to do that maybe thinks they want to work on some of those programs. And they go over there for a couple of weeks and, and train with the BOCES people who are skilled professionals in their field. Just a typical specialty and learning camp day. Uh, like I said before, a campus spent half the day in a chosen program, half the day in recreation and swim. The campus in grades two through five. They spend the morning in their program. They spend the morning in their major and their specialty. And the afternoon, we put them in small recreation groups with their counselors, and that's based on their age and their gender. So if you're a girl in the second grade, you'd be in G for girl 20s. Right? If you're a boy in the fifth grade, you'd be in boy group, which would be B50s. So 
we break them up, like I said, by their age and their gender so they can have fun experiences and, and kind of all be on the same level. We invite everyone to participate. We never force anyone to participate. We just encourage uh, to be positive and, and kind to you, your fellow campers. And the campers in grades six through 10, they spend the morning in recreation, kind of the opposite of the, the second through fifth graders. So they'll come in and they'll have recreation in the morning and they swim in the pool. And then in the afternoon, they'll go to their specialty group, whatever their major is, whatever they decide to choose. And understand that you could choose whatever specialty you want. You could mix it up. Some people take academics first and athletics, or they go straight academics and then the arts. Or you can try everything out. And if you spend a couple of days, you don't really enjoy it. You know, we have plenty of room to move and, and take you uh, to places. that Our main goal here is to have fun in a safe environment, learn, and um, you know whatever your honest specialty is or whatever your interests are, we pretty much have something for everyone. A Red Cross swim instruction, um, as we said before, first date will be tested. They're put into small groups. Um, you'll come from your recreation. You'll change into your bathing suit, go into the pool, uh, get instruction. We have lifeguards all around. There's a, a full Hofstra summer camp and Hofstra pool staff that's there. So we have plenty of supervision and um, we follow all the all the rules from the Board of Health and um, this year, the, whatever the recommendations from the CDC, and we're also members of the American Camping Association, and uh, they have strict rules, and we follow by all that to make sure that we're on target and we keep up with all the, the recent protocols and all the, the changes, no matter what it may be. Our sports academy camps, I'm going to turn it over to Mark Russell. Mark's been our director there for several years. He'll explain how, you know, if that's your interest, is to be immersed all day in, in sports. You'll have an amazing time at our facilities and spending with our coaches and our players. And for people that really love sports, it's just a great way to get jump in and be part of something special. Mark. Hi, and thank you for joining us this evening. I'm just going to talk briefly about the sports academy camps. We have 13 different sports academy camps that are led by our Hofstra head coaches, assistant coaches, and players. We have boys and girls basketball, boys and girls soccer, boys and girls lacrosse, we have dance, we have cheer, we have baseball, softball, volleyball, wrestling, tennis, and our newest camp is our sports performance camp. All the campers will be in, the, like Terry said, in that state-of-the-art athletic facility. So we have the stadiums across the street where it would be boys and girls lax. We have the Mac Arena where you would have the boys and girls basketball and dance and cheer. And there we have the Hostra Soccer Stadium where you'd have boys and girls soccer the university baseball field, which where baseball would, would be, the Bill Edwards Stadium for softball, and the physical ed center where you'd have wrestling and volleyball. And campers would participate in their sports all day long, so a little different than what Terry had just spoke about. You're involved all day long in your sport. Um, you only swim twice a week in the sports academy camps, so you, you'd spend a lot of time in that particular sport that you wanted to participate in for the week. Your typical day would be, you know, a, a warm up, a dynamic warm up, um, and then get into some skill development, um, different types of drills off of that. Um, you'd practice and play in that. We do have contests usually by the end of the week. Some have championships in soccer and in basketball. Um, you would play small sided games in the different sports. So again, e each program has different lectures. So the coach, the coaches will speak to you about different things. And, and sometimes we bring in special lectures just to talk to the, um, the campus to explain, you know, where you, you're going and as you move up the ladder in, in your sport, wherever you want to be, whether you're going to move into college or not, or, or high school. So they do speak to them. Um, one thing you can do is you may choose a different sports academy camp each week, or you can mix and match with specialty or learning programs. So, um, there is a lot of flexibility with the sports camps. All right. And any questions at the end, I'll, I'll be happy to answer for you. And I'm going to turn it over to Melissa right now uh, for lunch and transportation. Lunch here at camp is pretty special. Lunch is included with every program that you may register for, whether it's specialty learning institute, BOCES, or sports academy camps. Here we use Compass Dining, and they adhere to all the Board of Health and CDC guidelines for prepping and serving food. So daily options, we have a hot entree every day. They'll change from chicken tenders to pizza, spaghetti, chicken and broccoli, et cetera. We always have daily fruit and a daily vegetable. And if it's something that your children or child may not like, we also have hamburgers and hot dogs daily. 
And then also we give a dessert. So whether it's brownies, cookies, ice cream, ices, every day the kids will have a different dessert to eat underneath the gazebo. We also have dietary plants if necessary and requested so we can provide gluten-free, kosher, and some vegetarian options. Transportation. We use a company called We Transport, who services many Long Island school districts. All their bus drivers are background checked and professional. They do this all year round, so they know exactly what it what's necessary when it comes to camp. Buses are air conditioned, and bus routes will be compiled closer to the start of your camp. So a week before your desired start date, the drivers will go out and practice their run. They'll leave a letter in your mailbox introducing themselves and telling you approximately what time they will be there. So for example, you may get a letter that says, hi, my name is Joe, and I'll be there at 8, 10 in the morning. Door-to-door -door transportation is available for many residents in Nassau, Suffolk, and Queen counties. We also have area pickups in Manhattan, Queens, and Suffolk. If you are on a dead end, however, you may have to meet the bus at the corner. Transportation is included in the tuition cost for specialty and learning institute camp programs, and it can be added if necessary for one week sports academy camps. And again, we will adhere to all state, CDC, Board of Health, and ACA camp guidelines as they progress and come out. We will now um, show you a quick video on how to register online. This is Patty in the Summer Camp Office, and I'm here to help you set up your campers registration. So in order to register online, you would just go to hofstra.edu slash camp, and that will take you to the main page of our website. Across the blue bar in the top of the page, you'll see account login. You're going to click on that, and then you'll see that there's an option to create a new student account. Please make sure that when you're registering, this is all of your camper's unique information. So today we're gonna to register Happy Camper. You're going um, to put in their birth date. Please make sure you put in an email address that you're gonna check. You will get a lot of information through our email. You're going to create a login name and a password that you're gonna remember and a secret question. Once you hit create, it's gonna ask you to actually use the login you just made and the password, and you're gonna actually log into their account. At this point, you can just click on the type of camp that you wanna register for, whether it be specialty camp or one of our sports camps. Today, we're gonna to register just for argument's sake, Cub Camp. So we're gonna scroll down through all the different programs that we offer, and we're gonna click on view sections. We're gonna register for session one, so you're just gonna click the actual session. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see register now. You just hit that button. And then if you go up to the shopping cart, you can go to checkout. This, all this information is gonna be about your camper. So once you get to this page, you're gonna put in all the information and answer all the questions. And at the very bottom, you're gonna click on next. This will take you to the actual shopping cart. You should make sure that you're registered for the right grades and the program that you're looking for. You'll see that you're just going to put a deposit in right now. This will not reflect any discounts on this page. So then you're gonna hit make payment. And once you do that, it's gonna take you to the page where you're gonna put your credit card information in. You can go ahead and put all this in and then you'll be done, you'll get a, a receipt. So the other way to register would be to do the manual registration form. In this case, again, you go back to the home page, and in the blue bar, you'll see the word forms. If you click on that, it'll take you to registration forms, and then you're going to click on summer camp registration. You're going to print this form out. It's a four-page form. We do need all four pages. This will be all the campers' information. Make sure the grade you're putting in is going to be the grade that they're entering in September. And please, again, make sure that you give us a good email address because all the information will go through emails. Um, the last, uh, the third page is gonna give you the option to put in your credit card information. And then the last page, make sure you read through completely 
and sign the bottom. We can't process the registration without your signature on this last page. I hope this helped you out. And if you need any more information, please don't hesitate to contact us by email at ce-camps at hofstra.edu or give us a call in the office at 516-463-2267. All the things we've gone through tonight, uh, including this webinar will be posted. The video will be posted in a few days and uh, we're plan on posting what Patty just went through about registration. So don't be concerned if there's anything in there that you weren't sure you caught or, or missed or whatever, but um, just to let you know, the other thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know, which is kind of important is we have a special offer going on, a discount. Our early rate is in effect and we even have an extra discount for anyone who went on to the webinar or wants to tell anyone about the webinar. We're kind of uh, just opening up camp. We've been open for a little while, but uh, this was our first time that we're getting out to the public and talking about it. So just to let you know that we have a special discount that um, for every two week session, it's a hundred dollars. So it's a hundred dollars if you come for two weeks off, it's $200 if you come for four weeks, if you come for six weeks, it's $300. And every uh, sports academy camp, is $50 off. We also have a series of discounts that we offer in general, and that includes everything from alumni to employee discount. If you belong to any kind of a union, whether it's a trade union, a teacher union, anything like that, we honor um, out of respect the unions and give a special discount for that. So that can be um, taken care of as you register online, and that can also be taken care of you on a call and ask questions. And uh, you just heard Patty speak and Melissa was on before. They were the people that would take most of the questions for you during the week. But we're all here nine to five, uh, Monday to Friday. Uh, we answer emails every, you know, every work day also. So if you any concerns or things you think about after we're done tonight, feel free to ask and, and, and fire away. And we'll be more than happy to, to help you out and, uh, you know, stay in the right direction. And, and hopefully this is the right place for you. Um, I want to take questions. We'll do the best we can to offer everybody's question. And Mark and um, Melissa are back on, so uh, we'll answer the questions as, as best we can. Understand that some of the things, uh, as far as the regulations, have not been published yet and are not out. But as I said before, we're very fortunate to have a, a, be on a college campus that's been experiencing all these things. And like I said, we have children, at, uh, adults actually, and, and students that live here. Uh, we have a full faculty that comes on campus. We have people, we have, we have a campus that's been open, um, which means serving food, which means uh, cleaning, which means, you know, just the safety. So we're, we're kind of, a, uh, we feel like we're kind of ahead of the curve. And we're also very lucky to have the partnership with Northwell Health. And uh, their medical school is right here on our campus. It's actually right next to where we have camp. So we have great um, access to people that can help us get through these things once everything comes down and, and everything's straight up. So we'll answer the questions to the best of our capabilities, but understand that some of the things will change as we go. And um, we're pretty confident we can bring you a product that's very close to what we usually do every year and we'll make whatever modifications we have to. We've also been in consult uh, with our transportation. Uh, we transport several times. We've met with the Compass Food Service many times, our janitorial staff, our plant department. And um, we also, um, have access to many of the local school districts who have been speaking with them on how they do things and what's been successful and what's the best choice for us moving forward to run camp. So um, let's get some of the questions rolling and uh, we'll answer them to the best we can. And if it's for me, it's great. Otherwise, I can give it out to these, you know, these guys. Question, first question, is the pool open to all campers regardless of which program they are enrolled in? Melissa, you want to take that one? Okay, I'll help out with that. Melissa, basically, uh, basically the deal is it's open to every everyone that comes in. The specialty camp and the learning institute, they go every day. The sports academy camps, they are scheduled a couple times a day um, because they want to be so immersed in their, um, in their field. So it, it, the pool is right next to our main physical education center, so it's real close, and uh, the locker rooms and the changing areas are also right in the same area. Next question, will there be medical staff on site facility on daily? Listen, the best thing I'm gonna tell you is I will match our medical staff and our, our um, infirmary with anyone, anyone on Long Island. We usually have three to four, sometimes more nurses here every day. Uh, most of them are work at the local hospital or school nurses. And we also have EMTs out on the field. 
uh, the EMTs just as an easier way to get immediately to a child and also understand that we have one public safety officer directly assigned to us and a whole staff that's out there ready for us to go. They come by in cars and those guys are all EMTs. They have medical equipment on their on their cars and their trucks. So um, I'm confident that you know we're pretty good with that. The only thing we ask is just tell us up front what the issue is. We've had every kind of uh, concern and and if it's something that we think we need to call you on, we'll call you ahead of time and make sure we know we have times where kids can get their medication and uh, where you can consult with the nurse prior to coming to camp. And so we make sure we're all on the same page. Which sports camps are co-ed? Mark, are you up? Yeah, I'll take that. So the, the co-ed camps would be the volleyball camp, the soccer camp, and that would be it. You know, in the new camp that we just started, the sports performance camp, you know, we would have that would be co-ed too. Dance and cheer are co-ed. Um, so there's no problem there too. So dance, cheer, soccer, volleyball would be the co-ed. Also, if, if there's a, a female that wants to play baseball, that's awesome. We usually have a couple, right, Mark, every year yeah. that want to come play. And we don't, um, we pretty, pretty much can work out anything with anyone where they want to go and, but the ones he mentioned are the ones that are predominantly co-ed. But again, we've had we've had girls who have uh, played in our New York Baseball Academy, which is the premier baseball uh, camp in, in the New York area. And right, Mark, those girls have done yeah. awesome and enjoyed it and been accepted. And so um, that's a great question, Jeff. We appreciate it. And that's something we look forward to is different people just participating with each other and having fun. Considering they are outside most of the day, will masks be required all day? Barbara, at this point, we don't know. We really don't know the answer. Um, we don't even have guidelines from the governor's office at this point. Um, we're probably going to follow the same kind of rules they do in school. So where we progress June 28th and where we are February 10th is going to be hard to tell. So the best answer is we don't know, but we have enough connections with people, like I said, from Northwell, from the American Camping Association. Uh, we have a great working relationship from the Board of Health. And... Um, you know, so what we're going to do whatever they instruct us to do. And we hope it's, uh, you know, by, by June 28th, we hope that it's a little more open and, and the children can enjoy going outside, running around. And, and uh, you know, because we have a lot of grass fields here and, and we have turf fields and our outside and our grounds are just beautiful. And we hope they're able to go outside and enjoy that. What trainings do the staff partake in? That's a great question. Melissa, you want to do that a little bit? Sure. So. For our staff members, we do have um, a two-day orientation program where they come and we have representatives from our human resources department and they will do a harassment training um, and then all the directors will come in and everyone has their part. So it is a day long training for all staff. They walk over to the pool, the swim staff learn what they have to do, the recreation staff learn what they have to do. They meet with the nurses and they go over if there's uh, an allergy what steps and precautions they need to take. Um, they meet with public safety comes in and everyone knows everything. So it, it is a day long, two day long orientation for our staff members. And also, as I stated before, we do a full criminal background check. That's not mandated. That's just something Hofstra as, a, as an educational institution uh, of higher learning takes on. So um, we also, as required by the Board of Health, have everyone registered to the New York State uh, child abuse registry in Albany, but we do a full criminal background check. And uh, believe me, you know, we're pretty strict about who comes and who doesn't. And uh, Melissa will tell you, because she handles all of our HR stuff and it's extensive and uh, we're proud of that. That's one of the things I'm proud of as the camp director that I know that everybody steps foot on here, has been trained properly, has been cleared, has been vetted, and they understand what it is to treat people the right way. And we're fortunate to have a human resources department at a big university like this that helps us with that. Mark, you got this one? Yeah, I'll take it. So the outside sports would be obviously soccer, lacrosse, um, baseball, softball, tennis, and the sports performance can go outside or inside. It would probably be the majority of the time it would be inside. The inside sports are boys and girls basketball. We play in an air-conditioned Mac arena. It's, the temperature is great in there for them. Um, dance and cheer are both inside and so is volleyball and wrestling. So those would be all the ones that are, that are inside. 
J just to play off that, um, we also have an 80-yard indoor sports bubble that we use in inclement weather. And sometimes soccer, right, Mark, will go in there. And the NYBA, the baseball, spends a lot of time in there. So we have um, between the Mac Arena, the Physical Education Center, the Recreation Center, which is just up the hill, and the sports bubble. Also, if it's a rainy day or it's really it's too hot, um, we're able to go inside. And everything we do is monitored by our infirmary. And also our, our athletic trainers will come out and let us know whether they think it's uh, the weather is sufficient for children to participate. So um, we do both inside and outside. But that's a great question, Jeff. Thanks for it. And if one other thing is, you know, if, if it is really hot where the trainers do take us off the field, we have the capability of moving the different sports indoors. So we can move soccer into the PEB if we need to. Um, and let them come in there so they get off that hot turf. So we're, we are able to move the, the campers around if we get really, really hot weather or, you know, thunder and lightning, so. How many kids in the pool at once? There are, um, just to know, there are five different uh, swim sessions. Uh, there's two in the morning, two in the afternoon, and one in the middle of the day, and they go with their recreation group. So uh, the pool, uh, the capacity of the pool is probably about 150. We probably do about half of that, you know, and this year with, with regulations, we're not sure um, exactly how many we can have with there, but we also have a low end, which is a, a pool for children that aren't as proficient as swimmers. And as you progress, you can go to the higher end of the pool. Um, we have pool two pool directors and one safety director that just comes around and checks out safety things. So kids in the pool, they're spread out pretty good. Uh, and they're in spaces depending. I mean, if you're a non-swimmer, we have we have councils that just handle non-swimmers that will literally pick the children up from the side, bring them in and walk through it. And one of the things we're proud of is is how the children are able to progress through the year years and, and even the summer to uh, to become better swimmers. And our pool, like I said, is a is a collegiate pool that's used by not just our college students, but uh, members. But during the summer, it's just strictly camp. And like I said, we, we usually go about half of what capacity is. And um, to the most part, sometimes it's not even that. Like uh, when we put our young cub swimmers in there, they're basically the only ones in the pool. We want to make sure that, you know, we're able to give them enough space and, and room to, to just grow as swimmers and, and, and be safe. Mm -hmm. Will there be an information session that focuses on especially camps? Yes, there will be. As we move forward, we plan on doing uh, different webinars every two weeks. Like there might be one that uh, just talks about specialty camps, and there might be one that just talks about sports camps. There might be one that just talks about BOCE. So we're scheduling them as we go. Look for us in the next week or so, probably sooner to announce that. And uh, we'll do different sessions. And, and to be honest with you, if you guys have anything that you think um, you want to speak about or have us you know, speak about that'd be awesome. And we're going to bring different people on to get to meet most of the staff. And uh, I mean, personally, I love doing this. I love meeting people. I love, uh, I'm proud of our product and I feel good about it. So I love, you know, letting everybody know uh, what we're about and, and uh, just, just where, what we offer and, and, and why we're special. What kind of recreation activities do the kids do after this specialty? That's a great question. We have a little bit of everything. We have grass fields. We have a rugby field that we use a grass field. Um, that's an intramural field during the year. We, we have two Gaga pits that we set up, um, you know, plastic around. And that, that's one of the favorites of, of everybody. Uh, we play kickball. Um, we play, we set up outdoor volleyball. Uh, we play simple games, you know, that team games like capture the flag. Um, we also have, depending on what the likeness is, we have uh, flag football we play. We can play wiffle ball. Um, soccer. So we really run any kind of game you could think of and we continually change and try to figure things out. And also part of recreation is every Thursday is a special day. Uh, that could be everything from color wars. We've had the Harlem Wizards come in. We have carnivals. And again, we have to see what the regulations are this year about what we can do. We have uh, just we bring the kids into the field hockey stadium, which is really cool. It's all turf and uh, plans this year is to go across the street to the stadium and and kids have fun there. So it's it's really about everything. Um, from anything you could think of that you might want to do in a gym class, and we, and we multiply that, and there's plenty of room for everyone to spread out. And like I said, we're really lucky here that we have, like, a great plant department that takes care of the fields and takes care of uh, manicuring everything and, and, and just keeping things going and, and you know, keeping the fields straight and neat and uh, 
you know, just for we have water stations to let you know outside of all over the place, right, Mark? We have yes. water stations set up and uh, you know, so the kids could come and we do suggest that everybody brings a water bottle just so you could fill it up and carry it with you. Uh, because we try to get outside with recreation most of the time just because we think it's a good idea just for health reasons and and you know just to get outside and run around a little bit. So a lot of the recreation is done outside. Very few things are done inside. But if it is inclement weather, we have great fields and uh, gyms inside that we grow than I said in the 80 yard sports bubble too. For transportation, is there a distance requirement? If so, what is it? Basically, uh, Melissa can go through that as far as Nassau, Suffolk, right? Melissa, city and pick up spots, please. Right. So if you are in Nassau County, um, it's door to door for the most part, unless you're um, really top at Port Washington, we ask that you come down and you will meet the bus. But we do go out to Suffolk County. There are area stops there. We also go into Queens. So some of the neighborhoods that border Long Island will be door to door. And then such as like Springfield Gardens, Cambria Heights. And then we also have area pickups um, in Queens. And then we also go into Manhattan where we do have three or four area pickups in Manhattan. So just tell us your address. We could tell you whether or not you'll be a door to door um, customer or if you have to meet at a area pickup. For the one session, can you mix and match specialties? One week karate, next week sports sampler. Really what we ask you to do is spend the two weeks in this specific specialty because the, what we found um, in the past is if you don't spend the two weeks, you don't get the full instruction, you don't get the full integration of it. So we, we, we really ask that for each two week special, you choose one thing. So, um, you know, to mix and match would be very hard because if you came in the second week, they've accomplished so much in the first week of instruction and games. And if it's an academic thing, um, you would miss some of the procedures and, and things like that. So we do require um, you to stay in your specialty for the two weeks. Given COVID, I'm concerned about the non-refundability of deposits. What happens if I return from travel and ask to quarantine and child can attend camp, et cetera? Is deposit refundable in that case? Jeff, absolutely. That's a great question. I'm glad you asked it. Listen, the refundable deposit is, is really to protect us um, as far as enrollment and planning, right? We have to hire, we have to order things, we have to get fields ready, whatever. If there's an issue where COVID or um, some personal thing comes up that you would think you need to deposit back, we're, we're all ears, we listen, where we get it, you know, um, most of us are parents and have been here for a lot, a lot of years and we've understand and, you know, understand the stories and things that come up. I'm glad you asked that because that's, that's, a, that's a real great question. And of course we will help you out with that. And um, we're not in the business of, uh, you know, making people unhappy. We're in the business of making happy and making the kids happy. And uh, at the end of the summer, I say, hey, you know, those guys treat us right and did the right thing. So thank you for that question. That's a great one. The multiple children need to be registered separately. Melissa, you want to do that one? Yes. Um, if you're registering online or with the hard copy form, each you have to register each child separately. I know it may be a task if you have multiple children, um, but it's the safest way for us to process them. So each child will need their own separate account if you're registering online. And if you're using the paper form, each child needs their own registration form. How is the baseball academy handling the COVID restrictions with campus? Mark? Um, I guess, again, until, you know, until we have all the CDC, what we're allowed to do and we can do or we can't do, um, we'll, we'll have to make that decision when they give us what we can do. So right now, you know, if we we can't follow what we did two years ago, we're going to need to really get some direction, um, whether it's from the governor, from the, the Board of Health, and then we'll respond to that. So, yeah, And also understand that whatever the regulations are, uh, we'll adhere to them. So if it's um, six feet apart on the field, you know, we've already, Mark and I have worked on this extensively. Um, alternate plans will have, you know, markers on the field where they have to go and instruction can take, take place from there. I know... Um, there were some people that ran camps last year. We just didn't feel comfortable as a university. They'll be able to put out a quality product and be safe. So people have done it and uh, you know, we've learned and we we attend different conferences, right, Mark, and seminars and, and webinars about what's going on. So as it gets closer, we'll have a better answer, but just understand whatever the regulations are, we're gonna follow them and we're gonna make sure that they have a, you know, 
a good time and enjoy it. Uh, for instance, our baseball team here at Hofstra is out playing, and I've watched practice the other day, and they do a pretty good job of making sure they don't all crowd things and they walk on the field and they spread out. And of course, there's going to be some instances when you're up bad and there's a catcher where it might, you know, you might get a little closer than normal. But um, our baseball coach, Coach Russo, runs our New York Baseball Academy. So one of the cool parts is he'll be ready when it comes to knowing what the regulations are, and he's already done it. So um, it'll be kind of easiest for us to transition into what it should be. Is the camp nut free? Melissa? We are um, a peanut aware camp program. So we, with Compass, do not cook anything in peanut oil. We don't serve peanut butter, anything like that. However, we cannot stop a camper from bringing in um, anything with peanuts. How, if they are eating that, they will be put to a separate table just because there are a lot of children with nut allergies. So we are peanut aware. Yeah, and we've been pretty successful. I mean, I don't think we've had any problem. Anyone that didn't understand our policy and worked with us. So again, when you fill out the medical form, you let us know and we do orientation with the campers, right, Melissa? We'll let them know what the deal is and keep an eye out. And, um, you know, like she said, if somebody brings something in a bag that we don't know about, we, we ask not to, but most kids do not bring food because our lunch is so extensive, they don't need food. Um, that we'll, we make sure, like she said, we'll separate anyone and put people in situations where uh, safety comes first. Who runs the baseball camps? Is it divided by age or ability? Great question, Jackie. Mark, you got that? Yeah, so the baseball camp is run by Coach Russo and his staff. Um, it's divided by age and ability. Yes, it is. But obviously, if your child is a seven-year-old and he's a little more advanced and Coach Russo feels like he can move the child up, he'll move the child up. Um, it can go the other way too. It usually doesn't, but again, we just, it, it's safety too. So, you know, we can't have a seven year old playing with 12 and 13 year olds, obviously. So, um, we try to make it where we're going to work with the child and, and work with the parent and make it a great experience for the camper. But coach Russo oversees the camp. Um, he talks to me a lot about it, but you know, he'll have final say in, in who moves around and who doesn't move around. And understand the first day. Uh, the New York Baseball Academy, which has been in business for over 40 years, they moved here about, I guess, about seven years ago. Um, they used to be in New York Tech with Bob Hirschfield. Uh, they have a really unique uh, way of assessing the players. They go through a series of tests that they've been using for years, and there's actually Mark and I, right, run off the sheets for them, and they meet at night. They stay the first day of camp and meet at night to assess everybody's ability and where they would fit in. And uh, we have so many different fields. We have the main diamond. We have the West Fields, which is two fields over there. They play in the bubble, and there's a field outside of the, the sports bubble. So there's so many different fields where, depending on your ability, you can move to different fields. And like Mark said, if you're young and you're doing well, you can move up. If you're a little older and uncomfortable, you can move down, and we just move you on to the next field and go like that. But one of the things that's cool to New York Baseball Academy is every morning they start off with um, some kind of lesson, some kind of drill uh, where one of the coaches comes out. We bring in people from other colleges. We brought professional uh, athletes in, uh, baseball players. We brought people in that run local travel teams, and and uh, we brought in the hitting coach, Kevin Long, when he was with the Yankees years ago. So we're pretty good at getting the instruction out. And um, like I said, the, most of the guys that worked at New York Baseball Academy have been there for over 20 years. So they're pretty experienced, and um, they're pretty good at dividing up the kids to the spots. And, that belong. and most, most are high school or college coaches that are in charge of almost every single station that's there. So what are specific COVID protocols? If a child or staff is exposed, what steps are taken to protect other campers or staff? Kimberly, great question. Thank you. Right now, there's nothing um, at the present moment that has been put out in regarding camps. Um, obviously, we're going to follow whatever protocol it is. And like I said, we're very fortunate here as a college uh, campus that they've already done that and they know how to... Um, you know, check things out as people go along and they know what the quarantine policies are. And again, like I said, they might change for camp and um, go from there. But, you know, whether it's contact tracing or quarantining someone or letting people know, uh, we're very fortunate that the staff that's here at the college has already experienced that. And one of the other things is we continually sanitize. Um, we have a full staff. If you look on our website, we actually have a video of a uh, director of campus operations who speaks to you about how they spray things down and go from there. So um, as far as exposed goes, we don't have the details yet, but I can assure you that we will be 100% uh, behind whatever the protocols are. Uh, we have people, we actually, uh, Mark and I was speaking this afternoon, we actually have someone who's gonna be just our COVID coordinator that's gonna 
go around and make sure we're following all the rules. And that's going to be her only job is just to go around and make sure we're straight up whatever those rules are at the time. Where does the kosher food come from? That's a good question also. Compass Foods is uh, the cater on campus. They cater here, they cater most other colleges, and they also cater a lot of schools in addition to uh, offices and, and huge you know, management places. So the, fo the kosher food would come from uh, their distributor. I don't know the name off the top of my head, but uh, it's all pre-wrapped. And um, you know, they, what happens is when you fill out your application to come to camp, there'll be a box, right, Melissa, where you can check yeah. off with kosher or whatever your, your meal modification is. And again, we're lucky that we have a catering service here that does it all year round. And um, they're able to meet the needs of everyone. And, and uh, you know, depending on um, if you eat kosher or not, or follow the kosher rules where the, the campus dining, um, which is Compass, like I said, they're, they get their food from there, whoever their kosher distributor is. And there is a rabbi here on campus that just ch over checks, oversees everything just to make sure that everything is all right. So we do have that also, that he is here all year round for the university. How much more is transportation for sports camp, Mark? Um, tell you, man, I'm going to defer that to you. A little it better is $235 there you um, go, each boy. week that you need it for the sports academy camps. So really what the, the answer is there, it's $235 and um, for a one week camp, uh, basically the, the industry standard is a lot of people like to carpool for the sports camps and don't want to pay that money and go like that. But the benefit of the transportation is um, depending where you live, will come right to your house. So if you're a person that works out of the home and uh, God, you know, we're not really sure where that's gonna, where that's gonna be in June, but if you work out of the home, it, it's convenient for you someone to come to your house. If you think in carpool or a lot of people, right, work close by here at Mitchell Field and the uh, RXR building and, and the Omni building, a lot of them just drop off. So that's your option. It's $235 more a week um, to get into the bus service. But if you register for a period and for some reason you have to change dates, can you do that, Melissa? Yes, you can. Um, when you register, as long as whatever program you want is available, you can change dates, you can change specialties, you can flip from specialty to a learning institute or to a sports academy camp. Um, nothing is set in stone. As long as that program is still available, you can make the change. And listen, we go through the same thing. If, if your child takes something and we usually ask you to give it two days, if after two days, right, Melissa, if right. you don't like it and call the office and want to move, she's right. As long as there's openings, uh, we're more than happy to move everyone uh, and goes from there. This is the kind of idea where... You know, we want you to enjoy yourself. And if your your kid is not enjoying what they're doing, then we want to find a way. And, you know, often I'll, I'll say, all right, Mrs. Walcott, what do I need to do to make uh, little Nicole happy? And, th and that's what we, that's kind of our motto is try to find out what will make the kid happy and what will make them enjoy, you know, coming here, whether it's getting off the bus or being dropped off. It looks like the gifted program ends in seventh grade. What do you recommend for an eighth grader who is interested in science? The pre-collegiate program starts in ninth grade. Okay, um, the gifted program um, is inclusive to itself in that they don't participate in recreation uh, and swim. So that's a little bit different. But as far as the science goes, um, our science camp, uh, the, the gentleman that runs it is a, is a doctor in neuroscience and, and it's some really cool stuff. And he does marine biology one week and he does genetics one week. And it's a pretty, um, if you're really into the sciences and, and you're in the eighth grade, you know, in, in the middle school, going into high school, it's a great, um, it's a great learner for that. And the, probably the coolest part is uh, Gittleson Hall here. We use the college science lab. As a matter of fact, Mark just went through all the reservations for the rooms this week. And it's just cool because you're in a college science lab and you're doing a lot of the same things. And the thing that kids love is there's no books, there's no notes, there's no tests, it's hands-on, get it going, whether it's marine biology, genetics, or general science, it's cool. So my suggestion would be go to that. There's also um, some BOCES things you can take um, that start after that, um, that come over at, at, at ComSat camp or some of the other things they do there. But if you wanted to stay on campus um, to take any of those science programs we offer would be the best, because it's in a college science lab. and. Um, Although it's not labeled as gifted, it's, it's pretty high end as far as learning goes. Can you provide more specific information regarding discounts and how to get them? 
Melissa, as you can tell, handles our registrations and runs our office. So I'm going <laughs> to throw it over to her. So when you register, there's a section, whether online or on the hard copy form, that in the acts if you are eligible for a discount, meaning do you are you an alumni of the university? Is there a sibling that you may be able to get a sibling discount? And um, if you belong to any kind of a union. So you check off the box and you provide the information. Now, it, if it is a union discount, you will have to provide proof, whether it's an ID card or something that shows the parent or guardian's name with the organization where they work. Um, and in regards to the special discount that we are giving um, for the rest of this week, we will automatically apply it to everyone that registers between today and Sunday. So that's automatically given. But the alumni, the employee, the um, sibling, or the union, you will have to indicate that on the registration form and we will verify the information and we will manually give you that discount. You won't see it come off of your um, confirmation online. All we're asking for now is just your deposit to hold your place. And one of the things I just want to tell you is I don't know what the limit's going to be on uh, how many children we take. So um, I would think that if you have an interest in coming here, you know, it would be in your best interest to do it sooner, especially since the discount. And Melissa, you can confirm the discount we're giving now, uh, it, the price won't be any lower because it's the earlier rate, correct? Correct. Yes. So, you know, if you're looking for the best price, we're not looking for you to put all the money in, you just put a, um, a deposit down, like we said before, you could switch and move up and do things or, you know, make adjustments as you go, as we go through it. Melissa? Yes, we do. The credit union discount. Yes, we do still give that discount again. All we will need is some sort of proof with the parent or guardian's name and whatever credit union you get. And it is a 15% discount. If I just registered last Friday, can I call and let you know that I attended this for the extra discount? Melissa? Yes, you can. You can give us a call tomorrow or send us an email tonight. And then um, tomorrow I will make sure I will take that off of your children or child. Will the children be temperature screened daily and will there be a daily COVID related questionnaire? Um, again, right now, the best example I can give you is we have a Saturday classes for young people and they're asked to, uh, fill out the questionnaire before they come on campus. Do I know it's gonna be in June? Uh, Sarmo, I'm not really sure. I, 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 you know, I think anyone can guess and things change by the day. I saw just today, uh, Governor Cuomo is now letting people attend athletic events, which I think is a positive because it shows that maybe some things are opening up and he, he you know, he obviously he's trying to uh, make things better for people. So uh, I don't know the answer to that, but the best answer I can give you is right now we do that for our Saturday class program, which is a youth program for kids that we have hundreds of kids that come on a Saturday and they're asked to fill out the form um, online, I think either the night before or that morning. So they're not allowed in the classroom and, and we, we run a report through the computer that shows whether they filled out the form. And um, if they obviously answer any of the questions that are of concern, we, we'll address it with them. My daughter's interested in the counselor apprentice program, but can she do all the sports academy? What will happen if she do? Um, you can do the sports academy. Here's what I'll tell you. The uh, counselor apprentice, uh, we asking for four weeks. If you told me that your daughter wanted to do one of the sports academy weeks, right, Mark, for a week and then mm -hmm. jump into the CAP program, of course we can do it. We'll work with you. As simple as that. Or, you know, you want to do the, the CAP program for a week and then take a week and go to sports academy, of course we do it. That's what you, know, you think your daughter will be happy doing. We can work on that. That's easy. You know? That's working out. We're trying to make things easy as you can for people. Um, and listen, if, if that's her interest, I think that's cool that she's able to do a lot of different things. We're all in and we'll make it happen. If your union is paying, will you still need to make a deposit? Melissa? Um, if, if it's a registration, like if you're part of union 1199, then no, you just send in your application. Um, you won't be able to do it online. You will have to fill out the manual form and send it in and indicate that your union is paying for it. Um, but if it's something else where they will reimburse you, then yes, you pay us and then your union will then reimburse you back. Is there a discount for not using transportation? Melissa? At the moment, there is not. Um, I'm sure if case by case basis, we can see if we can figure something out. But no, if, you, if you're in specialty or learning institute program, the price is inclusive of the transportation fee, whether you use it or not. 
Yeah, and like Melissa said, everything Eric has done on a case by case situation, um, call here, speak to us. We're pretty good at working things out and working with you. And um, you know, if you want to come to camp, we're we're going to make it work for you. Looking for more specific information about the gifted camp. Is this available online? Um, the gifted camp. I don't know if the curriculum is quite up yet, but we will, right, Melissa? We put that up as we go along. Um, we asked uh, the young lady that runs that as it gets a little closer to put up what um, what the topics they cover. Uh, they usually do a science component, and, and things change year to year. So they have uh, usually right to learn some kind of a language mm -hmm. component. There's humanities, which is writing. Um, so there's different ways they approach it. And uh, like I said, a lot of it's project-based, and it's uh, they're immersed in that all day. They have four different periods throughout the day, plus lunch. And... Um, so what we probably don't have the curriculum. I haven't requested the curriculum from the uh, from the directors yet, but in the probably in the next month or so we'll be able to have that and we put it up so you can follow and you know ask specific questions if needed. Melissa, when's the rest of the money due? So payment will be due on May 15th. And if necessary, we can set up a payment plan to stretch the payments out a little bit further, but payment will have to be paid in full before your camper's start date. If sports are being chosen for the two-week specialty camp, like soccer or basketball, is that co-ed outdoors versus indoors? Soccer and basketball for the specialty camp are co-ed. Um, soccer is done outdoors at our intramural fields. And Basketball for a specialty camp is done at our recreation center, which is just completely redone. Um, it's an air-conditioned facility. So, uh, yeah, as far as that goes, soccer is outdoors. Uh, basketball is indoors, and they are co-ed. Will there be staff on hand when campers are in locker room area? Absolutely. That's one of the things we're really strict on. Um, the counselor who is in charge of them at that time period walks them into their changing area, uh, that counselor supervises them, and also all our directors. And we have um, not just the directors of each program, but after that, there's myself, Mark, uh, Steve, Gina, Jeremy, right, Julie. We have about seven or eight other directors that their general purpose is just to go around camp and make sure everybody's in the right place, doing the right thing, and, and acting properly. So, yeah, when in the locker room, it's closely supervised. Um, we try to move it in and out so they get maximum time in the pool. And, um, you know, the locker rooms, uh, they usually uh, leave their gear in there and we'll have somebody watch it and they go out into the pool, they come back in and they change and we're back out to the field in no time. How do you move kids around campus? That's a great question. Kids are moved around campus basically by walking. If you have to cross Hempstead Turnpike, um, for the most part, we have buses. We call them full service buses that stay on campus all day. And They'll take that. Again, we'll, we'll follow any COVID uh, regulations for that. But it, most of the kids walk. And to be honest with you, most of the kids enjoy walking. Everything is on. Um, there's a north and south campus. Uh, the south campus is uh, on the other side of uh, Hempstead Turnpike and the north campus on this side. And the way campus is set up is on the north campus is all the athletic fields, uh, the infirmary, the gyms, things like that. Um, and on the other side is the academic area. So if your child takes an academic piece, they'll be bused across across the street, and the buses line up in the morning. And after we take attendance in the in the gym, or you know, this year, depending on the regulations, we might drop you off right at the building. There'll be someone that meets you there and um, takes attendance and brings you right inside. Just to let you know too, everything we have indoors is air conditioned. Everything's completely air conditioned, um, including the gyms, uh, you know, all the uh, classrooms. To, so. That that's never going to be a worry. And like I said, we have a full plant staff who, and most one of Mark's job is to handle that. Is on call twenty you know twenty four seven for us. And if there's ever a problem that's in it, we have a couple hundred people in janitorial services, and we have everything from carpenters to plumbers to anything you need that'll help us. And uh, that goes even around you know helping kids just get around campus and figure out the best way everyone to be safe. We have a buildup of DCAA funds that were unable to use up last year due to the pandemic. Can we use them to pay for this year's classes? Melissa? Yes, I believe you can. Um, as long as the payment is made out to Hofstra University or Hofstra summer camps, that's fine. And again, Brett, we're willing to work with you. You call and uh, 
you know, like Melissa is great at, and Patty in the office are handling case by case uh, circumstances. And usually they'll take the information, come and sit with Mark and I and go through it. And but uh, the best the best answer I have is we'll do everything we can within our means uh, and within the rules. We're, we're rule followers here at Hofstra to make it happen for you. Are there any aftercare options that go until 6 p.m. for those working in the city? Wayne, great question. And yes, we do. Um, we have drop off in the morning is at 815. Camp starts at nine. The buses start coming about 815, 830. And in the evening, you can stay. It's an extra fee till six o'clock. And we have a couple of counselors with the children to play games. We're in a gym and sometimes we'll show videos, play games, whatever they have to do. Some kids just want to hang out and they'll get a snack and a drink and um, you just have to come and whoever. Just let us know who signed them out and they sign them out and they can be on their way. But we have that here till six o'clock. When will you be letting us know about safety modifications if someone due to COVID-19? As soon as we know, we'll let you know. It's as simple as that. And the only thing that, you know, is it, a little hard to predict is things change, right? Things are changing continually. But um, like I said, we're we're in tune with everything here through our different affiliations and, and also being with Northwell Health, which was right on our campus, which is awesome. awesome. So I, I can't tell you the date and the time, but uh, we'll follow everything and you know, in my heart, I'm hoping that Governor Cuomo puts something out in the next few weeks so we can at least start on this and, and go. But um, Mark and I have been working daily. Mark will tell you on plan A, plan B, plan C. So, uh, you know, we're going to figure everything out, whether it's how do we serve the food, how the, you know, how the kids are in buildings, whether they have masks on or not. Or, and, you know, how many people in a, in a facility we have right now, right now we have from the university what each classroom and each building is. And we were working on, again, that this week of how many people are allowed in each area. That could change, you know, it could, it could tell us to say 50%, 75% by June. So I don't have a date, but just know you can keep checking back if you want. Um, usually everybody knows when Governor Cuomo announces something, you know, unfortunately last year was the first year he announced really late that camps were able to open up, but we're hoping for sooner than later. Allowed to bring phones for the bus. Ooh, that's a good question. Melissa, I'm gonna throw that your way. Um. They can. We don't recommend having phones here on campus or any type of electronic devices, but they can bring the phones for the bus. And they, they do. We understand that you need to get in contact with your child throughout the day, though. If they do pull it out, they will be asked to put it back in their backpack. But on the bus going to camp and going home from camp, it is allowed. OK, great. Um, I just want to tell you, I appreciate everyone being here. Uh, I enjoy this stuff. It's fun. So I'm going to do it every couple of weeks and we're going to bring different people for you to meet. So uh, stay tuned with us and, and, and look to see where we're going in the next few weeks. I want to bring someone from the Game Builders Academy on. I want to bring someone from the specialty camps on, you know, a couple of those people to explain and I'll bring a couple of our coaches for everyone to meet. And um, again, as we get new modifications and, and new rules come up from whether it's the CDC or the American Camping Association or you know, during our Northwell meetings, um, we're really lucky. And, and uh, listen, the biggest thing here on our campus, which we're proud of, is we're here for kids. We're here for kids to be safe, for kids to be educated, and we're here for kids to have a good time. That goes from kids that are in kindergarten right through to college kids. So that's our business. That's what we do. And we're very fortunate, like I said, to be uh, around people that care and uh, have staffs that are year-round and understand this and work daily. So in closing, um, Obviously, how we operate classrooms and the food will depend on the most up-to-date guidelines we have from the state as we get closer to the summer. We're always going to balance uh, an excellent, fun, enriching experience with the best health and safety protocols available. Just one more reminder before we sign off. Um, know that the discounts are available and the early rate and the, the $100 off each session only goes through Sunday night. So the computer is set up for that if you go on. Correct, Melissa? Yes. It's set up for you to go. So all we need is your deposit. Um, I'm pretty confident we're going to fill up, especially if we're not able to go to 100% capacity. We pretty much fill up every year anyway. So it would be your best interest to ask us questions. Let us know what makes you happy, how we can make you become part of our camp family and, and stay here for years. And that's part of what we love here. And I mean, this year was really tough. We don't have basketball games, but we invite families out to basketball games and the soccer games and a lot of things going on, on campus that we'd like you to guys get immersed in and be fun. So thanks again for joining us. I appreciate it. Know that this will be up online very shortly. Uh, 
all public relations and uh, university relations staff is unbelievable to work with and they help us put all this stuff up and market and uh, especially this evening and we'll have the webinar up we'll have the video up soon and uh, the, the video that Patty did about registering for camp will be up soon also so thank you have a good night we'll post this up if you need anything also where phones are open nine to five every day call if we happen to miss a call for whatever um, we'll be sure to get back and uh, Melissa's uh, awesome at getting back to people and so is Patty in the office about return your emails and your phone calls as quick as we get them thanks again enjoy be safe to you and your family any questions let us know hope to see you in the summer and hopefully the conditions are better and we can all have a blast this summer thank you